as everybody comes on, I love my Shakira, Shakira, Shakira. Okay, so today um, we're gonna have a quick, we're gonna have a quick 30 minutes here. Um, and we're gonna just, I need, I need input here. We're gonna talk about database. So what I want to know is, um, so since you started with Ignite, let's just get a couple ahas that you've experienced for the last couple sessions, four sessions. And we're gonna talk a bit about database and what some of you are doing with your database. So let's get some ahas from the Ignite session over the last four times. And if you've taken Ignite before, maybe um, some insight to the material as well. So for me, um, the um, when we were talking about METs versus non-METs and 8x8 eight eight and 36 touch, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I guess it didn't really click with me that a met is someone that you know, but that you've actually talked to recently. Um, and I thought it was a great idea to go back and like go through your, you know, your database and call those mets and then get them on the eight by eight and then the 36 touch. Like that was kind of like an aha for me. Like, I mean, I awesome. have coded in my database, but they're just there. So yeah, it's interesting. I thought that was interesting also. Um, and it is always good to go back and, and have conversations with people that you maybe have put on the shelf a little bit. Like those conversations got shelved, those relationships got shelved. And that's what's really happening. And it, it, it's so easy that just like one, like, hey, how's it going? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I have not stayed in touch. How are the kids? Boom, right. you could just get right back. It's like a rubber band. You can get right back to where you were if you truly had a relationship. And then then it's not as if you're spamming them when you get them on an eight by eight. Like you send them the thank you note as the first touch, which I thought was clever. And then the rest, you know, the, the rest of the seven steps are should be pretty simple. Two phone calls and then the rest are, you know, various, you know, touches. But um yeah, I thought that was that was big for me. Thank you. And so everybody understands like the concept of eight by eight, eight touches over eight weeks for, as some of you may um, focus on, let's say an expired or for, for sale by owner uh, aspect of the business, it's going to be eight touches over eight days, eight touches over eight, you know, four days, it may have to adjust, but an eight by eight is eight touches over eight periods of time. Uh, so when we want to get back into relationship with our Mets, uh, or our, maybe our cold Mets, as we can call them, going back into an eight by eight, a phone call uh, and into an eight by eight will then introduce them back to where you can then put them on the 33 touch or 36 touch or uh, 156 touch. Uh, whatever touch program, I promise you anything over 24 is going to be plenty. All right. So what are some other ahas that we're having inside of Ignite? I did this this morning. Laura's not going to save you this time. <laughs> I mean, I have another if you want me to share. I mean, please the, go ahead. The calendar exercise that he shared with the green, orange, and yellow. Yep. Over the two week period, I thought was pretty clever also. Um, so you see like where you're spending your time and um, you're really until like he said, until your, your calor, calor, calendar entries are all green and those are the activities that you're actually making, you know, money-making activities, then you really don't need leverage or help or anything else until, until that point. So I thought that All was green. Amazing. Yeah. So has anybody taken that challenge and started to color code your week to see where you are spending your time and anybody have any aha moments on where you are spending your time and how we're going to adjust that to be more efficient? I haven't done it, but I would like to do it. Okay. Um, so to usually, I'll for, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll say ahead, me, I've always, I, I have my Google calendar and I have mine color coded, um, you know, purple for personal yellow for like open houses and showings. I have red for like the KW classes and, and whatever that is. And, um, you know, and orange for my other business and color coded. I, where I find my challenge is sticking to it. You know, I know that that bold law is not about selling real estate. It's about following a schedule or your calendar. And if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. 
However, I haven't been very purposeful Mm -hmm. on following in it. And that's where I, I struggle a lot. It looks good on paper, but I struggle. Yeah. And we've, we've gone through that area. And um, ideally we need to put our, our stuff in, in a calendar. Okay. Whether it's a paper calendar, whether it's a Google calendar, you need to. Uh, and I think sometimes just saying we are working very electronically nowadays, but the art of actually writing it and the memory that comes with writing it and, and drawing it out to then go ahead and put it into your electronic. Um, you own it a little bit more when you've actually touched it and you've written it. Okay. Every year and, I buy a planner and it's good for like January or February and then March kind of gets a little sparse and then April kind of is sparser. And then like by like May, it's like, I don't even use it anymore. So it's like, I have really great intentions. Yeah. When before COVID, I was all paper, all paper, always. And, you know, we had to switch to this Zoom life. And so you need the Zoom link. And that forced me to go Google Calendar. Um, but whatever works for you, all we need you to do is take a look at what you're, where you're spending your time. Because I promise you, just like if you have an issue with your money, take a look at your bank registry. See where that money, where, where it's going. It's the same thing with your, your business or your life. If you're not happy with what you're getting, let's see where you're spending, where, where you're spending your time. Where are you hanging out? This is where the law of the inner circle comes in. If you're hanging out in the right activities, if you're hanging out with the right mindset, if you're hanging out in the right, then you're going to get what you need. But if you look at that week and you start to say, wow, you know what? I didn't realize how many hours... And I do this when I, when I typically would take over an office, I will ask each staff member to just for one week straight, just jot down for me every half hour. What did you do? What did you spend time on? And a lot of times I find out that two or three people are doing some of the same things or somebody who has a better skill set is doing something that isn't the best use of their time. And so if we, if I do that for others, like this is where you need to do this for yourself. You need to do it for yourself. And for some of you, if it's, oh, well, I'm on this class or I'm on that class. Okay, great. Awesome. You're getting your learning in. We're a learning-based company. However, what's the next step is take the action and actually apply it and get your, get your uh, lead generation prospecting time in as well so that you can have your appointment time, so that you can have your contract to close time. So great. So the calendar exercise, love it. Um, the reconnecting with your with your Mets or your warm or your cold Mets, actually. Althea? I have two calendars. I use the Google calendar for work and the other calendar I use for personal, like for doctor's appointment and anything that has to do with personal, I use that so I don't get confused. Sure. You know, so I don't know if that would be helpful for someone else. Absolutely. Um, what I find is that we have to overlap that though, because if you start to really book yourself on appointments, mm -hmm. you'll forget that you had a doctor's appointment on that Tuesday. And uh, I would just transfer that personal time into your business calendar as well. Maybe it doesn't have to be so specific, but block that time off. Okay. You will start double booking yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. So on database management, talk to me a little bit about some tags that you've guys that you've identified. What are some, what are some categories that you are putting people in? Just Open start house. shooting it out. Buyer, seller. Buyer. I uh, have one for agents or vendors, um, agents, vendors, client, referrals, referrals, met, and Met, not met. Price points. Okay, price Open points. Open house visitors. Open house visitors. So the beauty of committing tagging um, by year. I've started okay, tagging she's by year. It's tagging like 20, by 20, year. 21. That's pretty interesting because um, you you might need that in the future as well. Ooh. I tag by town. Also, if I'm farming a certain town, and also investors, another tag I have so I can find town, it quickly. investors mm -hmm. 
even more so if you're looking at uh, investors and some have like some like the a multifamily versus some want to fix or flip, maybe you identify the type of investor that's in there. Yeah. The beauty of commands is you can literally make a tag for any type of contact. If it's, uh, if you're into, uh, I don't know, whatever you're into, you could just create that tag for that, you know, you, whatever it might be. Um, but like Bible study, I have a Bible study. Maybe it's a Bible study group so that anything appropriate that I would send to them, I'm not going to send to the whole entire database. You need to compartmentalize. This is like organizing your closet which we don't even want to get there, right? But it's like organizing your closet. Um, how much easier it is when you see all the black shirts are in one area, all the blue shirts are in one area, all the jeans are in another area. How much better do you feel about going into that closet and grabbing an outfit instead of where everything is all over the place, okay? I'm urging you to get your database organized. If not just simply as a sphere of influence, buyer, seller, what we just talked about, agent, as you meet other agents, you want to create an agent tag so that when you have a listing, when you say to a seller, I advertise to everyone on the MLS, and then I also have an elite group of agents that I love to work with, that I also push all of your extra marketing out to. So when I have a broker open, we will probably go back to that where we have broker opens in order to get broker price opinions. When I have that, I share this out with my core group of agents that I sell with in Bergen County. Whether it's KW or not, there are going to be agents that absolutely, um, you know, sell Glenrock. And so when you have Glenrock listings, you're going to know that those agents <coughs> are probably going to show your properties. Why not get out to them before you they, they find it, right? So being proactive. Um, also... Friends, family, um, all of your uh, professional services, so vendors or professional services, your dry cleaner, your um, hairdresser, your barber, your chiropractor, all of those people should be in your database. There's a really great phone book exercise that a lot of us have gone through in bold. But if you were to just take, you know, somebody's got to have an old phone book, or if you just go on Yellow Pages, yellowpages.com, and you start looking at all the different categories, go into A, you're like, oh, who's, who's my um, air conditioning guy? Oh, let's put the air conditioning guy in there. You get into B, you're like bakery. Who, what's my favorite bakery? Oh, I should probably, oh, that guy at the bakery, I should put him into that. So professional services, you all can expand your database by doing the yellow book, I mean, the yellow pages exercise. Um, Holly's asking, what do you do when you send out new listings and open houses to the database and some people text you back to re be removed from those emails? Okay, well, the question is, are you sending it through your personal text? Or are you sending it through your Twilio text? Or are you sending it through the email? Which way, Holly, if you could type that in, that'd be great. Um, it, it was sent through email. And they asked to be removed from the emails? Yeah. Well, I would personally just pick up the phone. I mean, if they're, if they're in my database and I know them and they're a Met, I'd probably pick up the phone and say, hey, Holly, I'm not sure if you meant to do that, but I had just sent you some listings. And I would just want to know if there was a reason why you unsubscribed. Did you not see the, that the, the information I was sending was valuable? And they, they might not had, even uh, realize it. Yeah, they had texted me um, two people from my church. And these are people I talk to like every other day. Hey, can you remove me from the list? And I said, well, you know, whenever I have a new listing or open houses, um, it's, you know, from a database that gets sent out to everyone uh, in my email account. And uh, they were just like, okay. Um, I, I, I mean, I honestly would really say to them though that this is a this is it's a service that you provide to your sellers. Um, if they were going to sell with you, they would probably want the same kind of exposure. That, uh, but I also would respect their wishes, Ollie. If they if they're telling you that they don't want to be bombarded with emails, maybe it's maybe that's just how they are. I would ask them, would it be okay that you send them information from time to time? Maybe you don't send them those emails, but occasionally is it okay if I, if I send them, is there a better way to communicate with you? 
Okay, I like I like that. Is there a, you know that's a good question. Is there a better way to communicate with you? More comfortable way to communicate my the very important information that I have about the market. You also have to understand some people might just be like some people might be in a rental situation and they don't think they're ever going to buy. So this doesn't pertain to them. And they just, they're, they're embarrassed to even have that conversation with you. So just take me off of your list because I'm never going to need your services. Right. So, so sometimes we have to just ask some questions as to what, what really, what really is the problem so that we can identify it and understand it's not really us. It's, it's, it's whatever their issue is. It's not you. And that's your, that's your, that's your cue to go get two more people to put in your database. Go talk to two new people in church that don't know Holly Andrews. Okay. So um, buyers and sellers. Now, how many of you inside of command, you're welcome, Holly. How many of you inside of command are using your opportunities for buyers and sellers? Okay, I see Michelle and, and I don't see too many others right now. However, I'm gonna encourage you, thank you Althea, every single buyer or potential buyer or seller that you are obtaining should go into an opportunity. The minute that they say they need to buy and they're gonna buy within the year, or even if they said, you know, two years, I would say, okay, well, you never know, something might come up. I would put them, I would create the opportunity and I would have them in the pipeline there. That would be the way I would keep that organized. Somebody says that they're thinking about selling. I would take them and I would put them in an opportunity. I would create an opportunity for them so that they would always be top of mind. So you can always go shopping in your pipeline. <coughs> okay. Um, same thing with the buyers. You don't want to forget about buyers. So even if you tag them and you put them into your database in that way, you still have an opportunity to forget about them. Because if you don't go looking for just the buyer tag, then you, you know, that, that, that's where you could miss it. But if you put them in opportunities and you visit opportunities every time that you're inside of command, then you'll know like, who are the hot people that I need to make sure that I'm connecting with to see if now is their time to buy or sell. All right. How about feeding your database? Have any of you created a system about when you feed your database? Is it a day of the week? Is it every day? Um, how purposeful are you with getting new people into your database? Have you thought about that? Hi, Mary. My database is very sparse. So um, I've just been very intentional. Every single person I talk to is going in my database now. So I've been consistently... And like I said, I'm really just getting into it this week. I've been consistently every single day just sitting down and adding at least 10 people. So it's it's getting there. Okay, great. Where are you finding these 10 people? Um, I'm, I'm meeting at least three people a day. That's that's my goal, and I've been I've been doing it. Um, I'm getting them from my phone, like this phone, and then my phone book. Okay. But and I think when you say you're meeting things, three people a day, where are you meeting these three people? Um, everywhere <laughs> at the gym on zoom, okay. um, at, I have a full-time job too. So I'm meeting them there. So awesome. great. Busy. Thank you for inspiring. That's awesome. So her, her, her commitment to herself and her business is three people a day that she's meeting and she's adding 10 people a day to her database, finding them from her phone, from her social media, from the gym, from anywhere she can think about adding people. I'm challenging you all that by Friday, we today's Wednesday, you have Wednesday and Thursday and then Friday, Friday at 1030, we're getting back together for Ignite. So by Friday, I'm expecting that you all can add at least 20 people to your database. 20, take the challenge and go find 20 people that you can add to your database. I will tell you that if you just look on Facebook alone or you just start looking through your phone, you may not have put everybody into your database. You may have met new people that you have not added into the database from the initial import. Go on to Instagram, go on to LinkedIn. If you don't have anybody, go on to the tax record and add your neighbors. Add your neighbors, add the people that are on your street. Then I would ask you to take one more, one more um, challenge is if you do that, if you wanna add a farm into your database, 
to where you can now circle prospect as we have things to tell our neighbors, I would then ask you to send me an email with the street that you want me to pull your emails and cell phone numbers from whole realty. Okay. So yes, you can go out and get it. You can go on to remind and you could probably find some of that information, but if you'd like to, if you identify a little section or a couple streets and you'd like to have the emails and the cell phones that are available for that area, so you could add that to your database as well, please just go ahead and email the coaching lobby at kw.com with what, and I don't care if I get a hundred requests, Jason will go and he will send every single one of you, whatever data you are looking for. We're here to help you. We want to, you know, enable you. <coughs> um, has anybody here received any of that data and has done something with it and put it into your database? Scott Bray, can you just tell me what that would look like? What would they be looking, how would they identify what they would tell me that they want so that they could put into their database and then what would they do with it? Well, um, if you have an open house, right, you um, ask for the streets around that open house and then you contact all those people you do, um, you know, you're supposed to do 10 across and five on either side of the street, but you call everyone in the neighborhood saying, hey, I'm having an open house. Um, do, you, do you know the Baileys? Um, their open houses this weekend. We'd like to invite you by for a preview for all the neighbors to come and take a look um, and, uh, you know, and see if it's, if you have, if you have any interest or if you know anybody who's looking to move to the neighborhood, maybe a, a cousin, right. uh, an uncle, whatever it is. Yeah. Now you would have, and I see your hand out there, but you would have, you would have brought them into your database, right? You, you, add, you added them into commands and you would tag mm -hmm. them. Smith Lane. Yeah, you're breaking up. Okay. So can you guys all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so understand that this is you as the business owner. This is you identifying, okay, I'm tasked right now to add 25 people in my database. If I don't have them personally and I can't go find them because I didn't put them, or I put everybody I know in, who else can I add? Okay. What areas do I want to do business provider. in? What, Arlene? Oh, so what areas do I want to do business in? And so you identify what streets you want to have real contact and relationship with those homeowners. I was saying service people, but I wasn't meaning to say it out loud. I'm sorry. sorry. What did you say? Service people? <laughs> service providers is what I was say mouthing to myself. I didn't realize you could see me. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Service providers. Okay. Althea? Um, with that, we're, you know, okay, we're going to um, prospect the neighborhood, right? How do sure. we manage the do not call list and how do we know who's on the do not call list? Well, um, number one is when you get it from Cold Realty, it is scrubbing it against the do not call. So if you do see DNC, it means do not call. Okay. Um, so that's going to, that's going to be, you're going to be good with that list. That's number one. But here's the reality. You're calling into a neighborhood or a farm and you're just going to be giving them some information. You're not asking them to sell their home. You're asking them, do they know anyone in the neighborhood that's looking to sell? And you're telling them about the Smiths around the corner that are having an open house or just listed and went under contract. You're giving them information. So if somebody were to say, I'm on the do not call list, you should not call me. I mean, number one is you're getting a scrubbed list. It should not be that it's there on the do not call. I would just apologize. I'm very sorry. I'll take you off of my list and I will never call you again. Okay, thank you. But broker wise, you're going to get a list that's already scrubbed. So, but will some people slip in? Yes. Somebody registered for the do not mail list and he thought he might register for the do not call list. And now he's angry because you're calling him and you're not mailing him. You know, whatever. Sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but I want to encourage you that you would then bring those people into your database. And what would be the simplest smart plan that you could put your neighbors on? Neighborhood nurture. Thank you, Jim Klimko. Thank you. Uh, neighborhood nurture, because why? Because you know what neighborhood they live in. You have their address. It would be of value to them to receive at least once a month, maybe twice a month, 
a neighborhood nurture, which means they're going to get information. And if you have not done this to yourself, I also task you. So not only do I task you to add 25 people to your database before Friday, I also ask you to put yourself in the database and set yourself to the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture smart plan. Okay, the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture smart plan. And once you do that, you'll start to receive what your neighbors would receive. Then that should make you feel super comfortable to go do this to anybody and everybody. You should be sending me as many people in your own town so that I can export as much as you want and you can import as much as you want to command because you're just sending them an email, guys. That's on this, that's on this end. Then the other part would be now they'd be in the database, they'd be labeled as Smith Farm. And once a month or once a well, you know, we, we create the schedule of when we're calling into that neighborhood. Um, we set them up on the DTD, the DTD2. If that's what you're gonna do, you could do street of the week. I was just consulting with two of our great agents here, and I said, when I was an agent, I did street of the week every week. Street of the week for me was Fridays. I had a large farm. I mailed to 3,500 people every single month. I started with 80. I went to 300. I ended up at 3,500 in one town. And every single week on a Friday, I had street of the week. My assistant would get me the street. She would pull it on the white pages because that's all we had back in 2008. And I would go ahead and call and make my notes. And then she would send handwritten notes to all the people that I missed. And I'd send them to the ones that I connected with because I knew what I talked to them about. And that was our system for Fridays. Fridays, it was called the farm, called street of the week. And then they get the, get the follow-up uh, handwritten note cards with business, with business cards in it. When we talk about the database of everybody else, all of the Mets, that for me was on a Wednesday. Wednesday was sphere, sphere day. So all day Wednesday. And why did I choose Wednesday? Because Wednesday, our friends and family, it's the middle of the week. They're at work. They're like, yeah, I could take a quick phone call. Yeah, yeah. Monday, no. Boss is on their neck. They got to get the stuff done. Friday, they don't want to talk to you. They're talking about what they're doing this weekend. So Wednesday is a nice day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the, the, you know, the umbrella of the week. But Wednesday for me was sphere of influence. So sphere of influence was going to not two letters for me. Back in the day, it wasn't even a thing. So for me, it was one letter of the week, one street of the week. I don't care whatever works for you. If you do one letter, you're going to talk to your whole database twice a year. If you do the two letters like the DTD2, you're going to talk to them four times a year. Ariane? I have a question. So... Um... I've heard different schools sure. of thought with this, um, you know, like, yeah, Wednesdays is Sphere, Fridays is Farm, you know, Mondays might be Fizbo's, Tuesdays yep. might be my, my clients, sellers and buyers, whatever system you use. Yep. However, I also heard that sometimes it can get a little monotonous, do just that one thing in all that day. So another school of thought that I heard was to time block each specific category within your lead generation time for the day, whether it be three hours or four hours or eight hours. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, you're going through your contacts and you're going through your database and then you still have other calls to make. What would be your thoughts on that? Um, the way I did it was I didn't let it, I didn't let anything interrupt me. I really didn't. And I would make my calls. I would get through it. It's your job. It's, it's not going to be the most comfortable. There's a book called eat that frog, eat that frog. Okay. Eat it first, eat it in the morning, get the ugly thing out of the way, right out the gate. And then the rest of the day is like, it's like going to the gym and getting it out of the way so that you're energized and you're feeling really good for the rest of the day. Otherwise, what happens? Six o'clock never happens. Eight o'clock bike ride, not didn't happen. But if I'm set in my, if I'm Miracle Morning, another book, great book, Miracle Morning, own your morning, get, get up a half hour earlier. It will change your world. 
However, it is your job. So I would get to that office and nobody was going to, the reason why nobody was going to get through my doors because my assistant literally would block it because she knew my natural behavior was I wanted to go out there and talk to the agents that were all here in the office. And in order to, for me to, I had to bunker myself in. So it was make those make those calls. You got to get through those calls. However, I did, and I will say, write it, speak it, knock it, call it, type it. You have all different ways of lead generation now. So if you have to go, okay, just the way, honest, in the gym, staying on the treadmill for an hour, very monotonous, can't do it. 15 minute bike, 15 minute treadmill, 15 minute Stairmaster. So Ariane, to your point is the conversations really don't change so much when you're going after like seller conversations. Um, but if you're calling sphere, you're in that kind of light, how you doing, you know, kind of mode. If you're calling for sale by owners, you're in a very different mindset. We do know that the repetition and uh, the productivity comes in repetition. And, you know, great uh, success comes from doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. So there is that, that method that, you know what, don't get into a lead generation time where you're like, oh, let me call this one from my church. Oh, oh then let me call this for sale by owner. Oh, then let me follow up with this guy over here. Because your brain literally has to switch in the conversation to conversation to conversation. So if you're really trying to plow through to make your contacts for the day, I would not advise jumping around. I would say, give me a half hour on this task. Okay, now I'm gonna write notes for a half hour. Okay, now I'm gonna go and do DMs on Facebook for a half hour. But listen, I don't really care what it is for you, whatever works, whatever gets you your contacts. And it's contacts not just to talk to somebody, but that did you have a purposeful real estate conversation? Did you, did you talk to them about real estate at all? It's not just, hey, me and Arlene were just like shooting the gamut and we got off the phone and I go, I'm counting her as a, as a contact. Now, if I said to her, Arlene, I got to go, I got to go on an appointment. You know, I'm selling houses. I'm selling houses like crazy cakes over here. And she goes, I know you girl, you go, you always so go and go, go, go talk to you later. Okay, I'm going to count that as a contact because Arlene knows I sell houses like crazy cakes. And then maybe I text her later on like, hey, it was great connecting with you this morning. Oh, by the way, who do you know that's looking to sell our house? This is the game. It's not just a, like, okay, I made my contacts. I'm done, right? I did my job. No. The whole goal is that they would call you back five minutes later and say, you know, what you were talking about, you got me thinking, maybe you should come over and take a look at, are you available Saturday or go to my mother's house this weekend? She needs to sell that house. <clears throat> so also don't, don't ghost, don't disappear once you make your contacts. Like, oh God, the number's calling me back. Answer the phone. Right, Scott? I know we've all been like that. Ah, it's calling me back. What do I do now? Answer it. Respond to it. Somebody texts you back right then, engage with them. Engage with them right then and there because there might not be another time. All right, so guys, um, I'm gonna let you guys go. So we have two things that we need to do. Number one is add 25 people to your database by Friday. Find them, I don't care who goes in there, um, but we want to get their address. We wanna get a phone number and an email, hopefully all four pieces of information and their name. Um, 25 people plus you are going to set yourself up on a smart plan, the bi-weekly nurturer. I want to see you guys on the bi-weekly nurturer. Just go in there, go in the library, smart plans, find it. Everybody knows where it is. And you can also take a look around because Reese is creating some new smart plans. But for, for this Friday, I want to see you all put yourself on a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. And if you get super bold, I would challenge you to put 10 people on the neighborhood nurture also. Ooh, potential clients. We want those, right? Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything to add on database? How we're organizing, how effective we are? We are good. Mary Beth, okay. can I ask you a question? Yes, go ahead, Scott Bray. Um, so to what email 
would I send a request for just circle processing um, in the neighborhood asking the for the coaching uh, lobby at kw.com. Okay. I just the said coaching your... lobby at kw.com. It will come to me and Jason. And, just and how you would send what how you would send that as simple as this. Send me the street and the zip code. Or go on to your Google map and take a little snapshot and then draw with a finger what section you want. I don't care. It's fine. That's fine by me. I just want to see what section of houses you want. We will export it for you and we will get you the cell phone numbers and the emails, the names and the addresses as many as we can. Thank you. Okay. I hope to see all of you send me a request and that Jason is so busy tonight getting all of your farms set up. Okay. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for that. Guys, have an awesome day. Go win the day, and I'll see you back here on Friday. All right, have a good one, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.